Hey, welcome again to the Simple Bible Study Podcast, continuing to go through the Word of God uh, in as simple and as basic a way as possible. We're picking up today at Matthew 27, uh, with the 27th chapter and the first verse uh, as we continue through this gospel of the kingdom. We're nearly done with it, uh, but we're watching our Lord now at the, the height of his ministry where he goes and gets ready to deliver himself up for the sins of the world. So as you grab your Bibles and open up to Matthew 27, we'll open up in a brief word of prayer and just say, Lord, uh, we pray that you would open up our understanding so that you, we would know what it is you have uh, for us to gain from this study. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. So Matthew 27 uh, brings us to uh, the arrest of Jesus. Peter has just denied him. His disciples have all forsaken him. And now he stands uh, having been uh, examined by the uh, by the religious leadership, the elders and the chief priests and such. And so um, now we find our Lord uh, standing uh, basically alone and getting ready to be uh, delivered up for death. So uh, verse verse one of verse chapter 27 says, when the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Now, Pontius Pilate is the, he's the Roman appointed governor over the, this region of uh, the Judean land. So uh, because the nation of Israel at this time is under Roman authority, uh, they have to get permission uh, from the Roman leadership, from the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, if they want to put a man to death. And so they take Jesus to Pilate's judgment hall after already determining that he was worthy of death. Uh, and so we're going to see uh, later on in this chapter, we're going to see that Pilate, Pontius Pilate, plays a crucial role in all of this. Uh, the early church creeds point out that Jesus suffered under Pontius Pilate. Uh, and that, and that's in the, uh, the apostles creed. Uh, if you, if you want to Google that and look that up, that's mentioned there. And then you also see it, uh, in the Bible as well, in, including in the book of Acts, where, uh, it, it mentions that Pilate, uh, actually mentioned several times that Pilate was a part of, uh, and had a share in what happens to our Lord here. So we'll see the role that he plays in this chapter as we go on, go on, but we're going to move on uh, to verse three, which says, then Judas, which had betrayed him. When he saw that Jesus was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. Now, Judas had been now used by the enemy. Uh, he, he's, he's been used by the enemy and now he realizes the wrong he has done and he wants to turn back. Uh, he, he wants to undo what he has done. The problem is what's done is done and he can't go back. And friends, there's some things in life that once you do them, you just can't take it back. You just can't go back, unfortunately. I, I hope somebody listening to this will, will hear me before you make that decision. You know the decision I'm talking about, the one on your mind <laughs> that, you, that you've been wrestling with and you, and you know is wrong. Uh, you, you, can, you, can, you can make a decision to do it or a decision to not do it, um, but you, you know, you can move on. And if there's something you've already done um, that you may regret, you can learn from it. That's true. But once it's done, it's done. The old saying is there's no use crying uh, over spilled milk. And that's true but uh, because it's already spilled and you can't put it back. But it's also true that there's no use in spilling the milk in the first place <laughs> if you can avoid it. And so I challenge you to, to think about that decision you're, you're pondering. Think about that wrong that's in front of you. Uh, there are certain things, as we said, there are certain things that once you do, you can't take back. Judas has done something here, and he can't take it back. And so verse 4 says, saying I have, this is Judas now, he's talk, trying to talk to the chief priests and the elders. He says, I have sinned that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? <laughs> See thou to that. <laughs> Judas wants to give the money back and he, and he wants to redeem himself and make himself feel better. 
Now, I'll say this. That's his first mistake. He shouldn't be trying to redeem himself, you see. He should be trying to get to that judgment hall where Jesus is and seeing if he can get close enough to him to fall on his knees and beg him for forgiveness. That's what he should be doing. Judas's problem is he's trying to he's trying to fix it himself when he needs to take it to the Lord and ask the Lord to fix it. You see, and I and again, uh, somebody listening in, you may have something that you regret doing. There may be something, some some activity or some decision you already made. Now, now, you know, once you've spilled the milk, is out. <laughs> Uh, but but there there is something you can do. Now, you can't necessarily take it back, but there is something you can do to live with what you have done. And, and that's stop trying to fix it yourself. That's number one. Stop wallowing in guilt. Stop trying to, uh, uh, to, to fix it and, and make yourself feel better and all that. Don't do that. Run to Jesus. <laughs> that's what you do uh, when you've made that mistake, when you have done the wrong that you can't take back. Run to Jesus. Give it to him. Let him take your burden, friend, and you won't regret that. Now, they asked Judas, they said, well, what is that to us? Isn't that typical of the devil? <laughs> I mean, the, the Judas had been working with them and, and, and they, they've been working together so beautifully up, up to this point. And now that they have used him up, now that they got what they wanted from him and, 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 and convinced him to do the wrong that was in his heart and, 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 and have gotten what they needed out of him, now they're done with him. They said, what has that got to do with us? Go, go, go handle that yourself. We're, you are of no more use to us. <laughs> they have used him up and cast him away. And that's just how the devil does people. Uh, there's so many people that are, are sitting in prison right now, all alone after being used up by the enemy. So, so-called friends that were with them, you know, when, when, the, when they were doing the wrong and encouraged you to do the wrong, now long gone. <laughs> uh, they, they ain't coming to visit them in prison, nothing. Uh, because uh, because the, that's how the devil does. He uses you up, and then he casts you aside after you've after you've done the wrong. And and again, this is about decisions. If you are considering doing some wrong, just remember that when the devil uses you up, he has no more use for you. <laughs> he won't be there to pick you up. He won't be there to help you after the decision has been made. When you when you need to be rescued, he will drop you off and leave you. See thou to that. They say it. <laughs> if you get nothing else from this teaching, from this video today, please get this. Do things God's way. Do the right thing. You will never regret doing the things the way that the Lord tells us to do in this Bible. But you will almost always regret not doing things the way that the Lord instructs. Amen. And so let's move to verse five. And he cast down the pieces of silver. This is Judas. He cast down the silver in the temple. The money couldn't help him. <laughs> the money was no good to him. He, he had done uh, uh, evil things to get the money, but after he has gotten it, his guilt has overwhelmed him, and the money doesn't change a thing. Uh, he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed, and what did he do? He went and he hanged himself. Hmm. What an end. <laughs> What an end to an awful story of a man who has been, who has made decisions, who has uh, decided to go in the ways of the devil, who has decided to allow himself to be used by the enemy. This is the end result of doing things wrong, of not doing things God's way. Yeah, Judas is sorry. He's sorry in this, in this, in this little section here. But the question is, why is he sorry? Again, there's there's people sitting in jail right now that are sorry. Uh, uh, they're, they're, they're not sorry for what they have done. They're sorry they got caught. They're sorry about the consequences. And that's Judas here. He's sorry about how this has turned out. It is it, it, it is what they call fleshly, uh, fleshly repentance, not spiritual repentance, not when you turn to God. It is fleshly repentance. There at 2 Corinthians, the... Seventh chapter, Paul talks about this at the, uh, the ninth verse. He says, now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, talking about these people at this Corinthian church that had done some wrong. He says, I'm not happy that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance. 
for ye were made sorry after a godly manner that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh or leads to repentance, to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Judas has the sorrow of the world and it leads to death. Godly sorrow leads to true repentance, true turning around, true turning to God, learning about, learning from that error, learning from that issue and that mistake and not looking to do it again. Judas has worldly sorrow, which leads to his death and he hangs himself. And by the way, I want to talk to somebody out there who may be contemplating suicide. Judas commits suicide here. Uh, and, 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 and there may be somebody listening to me right now who, who has had that thought going through your mind, going through your, your heart, thinking about that as a way to escape guilt or fear or hopelessness or depression or whatever it might be. Let me say to you, no, no, no. Let me plead with you. Please don't do that. It solves nothing to end your own life. Judas is not free here after this. He still has to face God. Instead of doing that, why don't you do what Judas should have done? Why don't you go and fall at the feet of Jesus and ask him to help you with your depression? Ask him to help you with your guilt. Ask him to help you with your hopelessness. Ask him to help you. And he will, friend. (laughs) I, I believe that Jesus even would have helped Judas here. I believe he would have. How do I know? Well, when Jesus is going to be dying here in the next chapter on the cross, as a man next to him who is guilty of, 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 of crimes, he turns and believes in Jesus. And Jesus says, this day <laughs> thou shalt be with me in paradise. Don't tell me he won't help Judas. And don't tell me he won't help you uh, because he will. All you have to do is come to him and throw, your, throw yourself down in front of the master and surrender it to him. And he will help in your time of trouble. Yes, I know he'll help you. I know he will. You've got something to live for, whoever I'm talking to. And if you need somebody to talk to, email the Bible guy. My email address is there in the the uh, the, the um, description of this video. Email me. I will make the time to talk to you because you are God's creation made in his image and that for a purpose. And you have great value, friend, wherever you are. There's also a a national suicide prevention phone number, and I'll place that in the details of this video because uh, that is not the way out. That is not the way out. That is a a coward's decision. I'm just going to put it out there. That's a coward's way out. Don't go that way. There is yet more for you to live for even on this earth. It is appointed on the man wants to die, but God makes that appointment. Let him make it. Let him decide when your life is over. In the meantime, trust him. Because it's appointed unto man once to die. And after that, there is the judgment that you must face. And so this is a tragic section. This is a this is a tragic end. And it didn't have to be that way. Judas Judas commits suicide here and he didn't have to commit suicide. It didn't have to end up this way. Yes, it was written beforehand that one would turn on Christ. We get that. Yes, it was written beforehand that 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 uh, 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 that, that Judas would end up betraying him. But after that, he could have come and asked for forgiveness and the Lord would have given it to him. And so Judas suicide here, though we're reading about it now, it didn't it didn't start here. Judas' suicide started not here in this chapter. It started back in the previous chapter when he let the devil in. At, uh, at Luke 22 and 3, it said that then Satan entered into Judas uh, and he went his way. And, this, and that's when he uh, betrayed Jesus. He allowed Satan into his heart, into his mind. He listened to Satan. And friend, right now, that's Satan trying to get you to take your life. (laughs) That's his voice. That's his voice. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is, 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 is pro, he is life. He's not death, friends. And so when something's telling you uh, that death is the better option for you, that ain't Jesus, that ain't God, that is Satan himself. And, and, and when you let him in and when you let him, when you listen to him, 
uh, that's where that's when you end up where Judas is now. Hanging, he hanged himself. He he ended his own life, uh, and, and 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 instead of instead of going to the Lord, tried to tried to fix it himself. Don't try to handle this yourself. Cry out for help, my friend. Cry out to the Lord, and He will hear you. Hallelujah to His name. And so, uh, let's read the the sixth verse of tw- verse chapter twenty seven. And the chief priests took the silver pieces, and said, "It is not lawful for." to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. And they took counsel and brought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore that field was called the field of blood unto this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet saying, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord's, as the Lord appointed me. Now this, this actually is a, a blending of two prophecies from both Jeremiah and Zechariah. Uh, at this time, uh, when the Old Testament was written, uh, the prophecies were more grouped together. And so uh, the prophecies of Zechariah were actually under the heading of the pro- prophecies of Jeremiah. And so if you said the prophecies, uh, the prophecy of Jeremiah, you could be referring either to the book of Jeremiah itself or one of the other prophets, which would have been grouped. Uh, with the book of Jeremiah. And so this, this, uh, this ninth verse uh, is fulfillment. It is actually an amazing and literal fulfillment of two prophecies from Jeremiah and Zechariah. Uh, but not to get too technical, and I hope I haven't already, but <laughs> I do want to note verse, this verse here where it says, they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel uh, did value. The children of Israel feel that Jesus, the son of God, the exalted one, my Lord, my savior is worth 30 pieces of silver. That's all. That's, that's what the son of God is worth to them. That, that's like having a Picasso painting and, and, and selling it at a yard sale for 20 bucks. You, you didn't know what you had when you sold that <laughs> and they didn't know what they had. And by the way, do you know what you have? (laughs) What is he worth to you and to me? Is he, is, is, does he have more value than just a few little pieces of silver? Hmm. Uh, 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 is, is he, is he, is he worth something to you? Is he worth giving up that sin in your life? Now, now, now you, you listening to a Bible study. So I assume you know his worth and his value, but I'll tell you this. I know his value. (laughs) And it's more than silver and gold. You you can have your silver. I wouldn't trade knowing Jesus for any amount of money you can throw at me. Because once I get your money, just like Judas had the money here, he tossed it in the temple. It couldn't help him no more. And once I have all this money, if I don't have Jesus, the money can't help me. (laughs) And so he's worth more than the silver and gold. Uh, What value can you put on the one who is a friend that sticks closer than a brother? (laughs) Huh? What value can you put on a protector who watches over me all day and all night, no matter where I go? What value can you put on a doctor when you're sick? He's a lawyer when you need defending. Uh, he's a shepherd who leads you in the right direction and, and wakes you up in the morning and causes you to see and lets you see the beautiful sunrise and the sunset and allows the uh, 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 allows you to eat day and night and takes good care of you and provides the air for you to breathe. He's a shepherd. Mm. I already said he leads you in the right direction. He feeds you. <laughs> he's, the, he's, he's the good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Let's look at that 23rd uh, uh, Psalms. Uh, 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 he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul and leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me, even in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What value can you place on that? <laughs> what value? I, I tell you that it is, it, is, it is a value that cannot be spoken. There is no such thing as that much value. You, you, he, he is priceless. 
as my Lord and as my Savior and as my shepherd. And so whatever it is, you have to give up to get him, give it up because he is worth more than whatever it is. Thank you so much for joining. We'll cut it off there and pick up again next time. Hey, God bless you. Take care.